Oh, let's go to line number uh, line number ten to speak with the Tory member for Humber East, the Minister of Natural Resources, Forestry, Agrifoods, Agriculture, also the Attorney General, the Honorable Tom Marshall. Hello, Minister Marshall, you're on the air. Howdy, good afternoon. I'm fine, Tom. How are you today? Not too bad, thanks. Uh, look, I wanted to call in. Uh, you know, I've been hearing some remarkable comments uh, made by some people on the show that, in my view, should have known better. Uh, I'm talking about uh, leaders of political parties who have said that uh, the spending on Muskrat Falls affects our deficit, or that the cause of of a projected deficit for next year, not this year, for next year and the year after and the year after that, is caused by Muskrat Falls. And Penny, nothing can be further from the truth. I spoke the money, my... the money that's invested in Muskrat Falls is an investment. It's not operational spending, so it does is not reflected in our it's not reflected in our revenues and expenses as a uh, so that there would be a deficit. It doesn't affect our deficit by by five cents. And you know, with all due respect, uh, leaders of political parties should know the difference. Now, I spoke my mind very clearly on Muskrat Falls association with the deficit in the opening of the show. But here's what some people will say on that on that particular issue, sir. Right. They will say that the two point seven or whatever billion dollars for the cash that we'll need for our equity piece to finance. Muskrat Falls, had that been applied to the deficit, the looming deficits, four billion could very easily be one billion, and that would be the thought process. So where are they wrong on that front in particular? Well, well, this year we're looking at a deficit of the seven hundred twenty-five million dollars, and we have the cash to pay for it. People should clearly understand that this is not a situation where we have to finance our deficit, and that's what you said. Next, governments had to go and do some capital, and they had to borrow that, which added to the debt to the debt as well. But what, what we've been able to do in the past, because of, of uh, you know the, the the oil and the minerals and the high prices, we've been able to run surpluses so that our revenues are greater than our expenses. That's number one. And then we had money left over to pay for our capital expenditures as well. Now that doesn't increase that wouldn't increase the uh, deficit if you're running a deficit. But we we had the cash to pay for our capital. So for the last eight years, we haven't borrowed a dime. For for operational purposes. No other government in the country can say that. In addition to that, when, when our debt would come due, like debt that was borrowed in the past by previous governments, and, and the debt would now come due, we also had the cash to pay that down. And in addition to that, we also had cash to make investments in oil and gas projects through Nalcor, and we'll have it in, 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 in Muskrat Falls. So that's the difference. And the money that we're putting into Muskrat Falls the, the money we will borrow to make our equity contribution into Muskrat Falls, um, we'll borrow that money. But, of course, offsetting that loan will be the value of our investment, our equity investment. So that's the key difference. Uh, Muskrat Falls doesn't increase the deficit. And uh, the money that goes into Muskrat Falls will earn cash in other words, we get something back. It's not like spending money, say, on a, on a, on a government program. That let's, let's take our dental program, a really, really good one that helps seniors uh, and children get, get, get dental care. So we do that, and we get the value of that, that done, but we don't get any cash coming back from the investment. The, the investment in the liquor corporation, for example, the investment in oil and gas, the investment in Muskrat Falls, we will get that money back that we put in. We'll get our investment back, and in addition to that, we will get profits year after year after year, which we and, and we can then take that money and spend it on health care and on education and on social programs to, to help our people. That's the difference. One is an investment, and one is the payment of an expense, and people have to uh, appreciate the distinction. Let, let, let's take the liquor corporation. Why is government in the liquor business? It doesn't make any sense to me. But government got in the liquor business because of the money it could make from it and, and whatever in, the, the government invested in the liquor stores, it's gotten that money back. And not only that, every year it's getting over $100 million in dividends, which it uses for the good things, health care, health, health care, education, the well, social programs. And Muskrat Falls is going to do the same. And so, and, and, and so will the investment in oil and gas. I don't want to be invested in oil and gas. What I want is the revenues that are going to come in that we can use for good things to help the people of the province. Well, I want us invested in oil and gas. But you, then you see the liquor store and the uh, lottery corporation stuff. We're in those things, even though they're social ills because of the revenue. That's another conversation. And I understand your position about not borrowing to repay uh, debt or debt financing. And, you know, some of this is Rob Peter to pay volatility the price of oil, yet the government, even through uh, experts' input from New York City Pier or whoever, that shows $124 a barrel. The problem's not even with that. 
that, sir. The problem is we outspent 124. So the writing was on the wall that there were tough years coming. The position of the province as an exporter of commodities subject to global influences, all of these things were fairly predictable. Way Locke was used and quoted by the government when well, it suits them. These were all forecast issues, but yet we find ourselves here and the spending was reckless and it put us in a deficit position. That can't be, that cannot be opposed, can it, sir? No, it, it, uh, obviously we have to live within our means, and we, we, we did that. We, we had six years of surpluses where we did leave it, live within our means. Living within our means means spending lessons coming in. And, so what have you uh, done for me lately? Six years of surplus is a fine record to run out six years ago or today. But today forward, until there's some real serious uh, attention drawn to our spending, forecast a projected deficit of $4 billion. This is what was, could have been avoided. That's but, my but, point. How am I wrong? No, you're not. And, 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 but well, what you have to remember is the circumstances change. You know, one, on, on the one hand, you've got, you've got, uh, you know, lots of production, uh, both in oil and in minerals. You've got high prices. The money was gushing in. Money that would come in and allow us to, for example, pay very generous uh, salaries to our, to our workers. But what happens? With the problem, the world economy has significantly changed, and as a result of that, prices are lower. As a result of that, the value of mineral shipments, the value of oil shipments are lower. Therefore, they're paying us less royalties. The companies that are doing it are, are because prices are down, they, they make less money, therefore they pay us less taxes. So there's a difference between the economy and the revenue that's coming in. For example, our economy is very strong. These projects are driving employment. We've got more employment than we've ever had. Also, the, the salaries are very high. Our, our average weekly earnings in this province, for the first time in history, are larger than the Canadian average. First time ever. So we have people working, they're making money, and we're seeing it in, their, in retail sales, we're seeing it in housing starts, we're seeing it in auto sales. And you know what? Our personal income taxes are going to be up $100 million because people are working and they're making money. But, uh, but on the other side, and here's the, here's the downside, is that the, the, the export sector, the oil companies and the mineral companies are selling the commodities that you mentioned a few moments ago. They're selling those into a, into a, a world economy that's slowing down, and therefore the prices are lower. And therefore, as I said, the royalties that we get are down, and the, and the corporate income taxes that they pay are down. Therefore, we have left revenue. And we have to do what you said we have to do. Now that there's been a change in circumstances, we have to cut the cloth to live with it, to, to live within a lower source of revenue that's coming in. And we're doing that. So what Mr. Minister Kennedy said today, he's, he's making predictions for the future. You know, we haven't had a, de a deficit of the size that he, he mentioned, but he's saying if we don't get our spending down, then we'll have large deficits. Our expenditures to match the revenue that's coming in, just like any business would do and just like any family. I, I totally understand, and I don't question the strength of the economy. We all see the numbers. We see the money that's flowing through the retail gates. That's all fine. But when the world, and you, we, I always hear you speak to the price of the, the commodities that we export and the subject to global influences. And knowing that's true, and knowing that cutting the cloth to fit the baby and budget forecasting is a look, not just next year, but it's a look years down the road. When the world was entering the recession, and all of these commodities, including ore, including oil, were starting to look like they were going to plummet and bottom out, we still continued on a path of spending that was conducive to everything being hunky-dory globally. So now and you say that to be cut the public services and cuts the programs and possibly cuts the social investments, those are also big economic drivers so you can't have it both ways here you can't be good fiscal managers without realizing and acknowledging the year the multi-year need for vision when it comes to budget uh, budget the promises money is that not yeah. a fair comment Fair comment, but Patty, we do we do plan. You know, every year at budget time, we we release not only this, the the numbers that we think are going to be for the current year, which again is a forecast, but also the following two years. So we are doing that. But but again, as we've discussed many times in the past, that the you know the oil prices are very volatile. You had experts down recently, bankers speaking to uh, you know at this oil and gas show. They all say the same thing. Every economy in the province, I'm uh, sorry, every economy in the country where a significant portion of its revenues are coming from oil and from minerals, like Alberta, like Saskatchewan, have been adversely affected by the slowdown in the world economy. But that's politics as opposed to fiscal prudence, though, isn't it, sir? And that really no, but is we true. do plan. But, Patty, we do plan out. We do plan out for three years. And, of course, again, you got to remember that when we had the surpluses, we didn't spend all the money. You know, we, we, we paid down debt, and we also accumulated liquidity. In other words, we kept some cash. Because we knew things can change pretty quickly. We knew there could be shocks to the system. And as a result of that, even though we've had a deficit this year, 
because the numbers were not as, weren't as high as we had forecast. And again, it's a forecast, but we're paying for it. We're not going into debt. The, the $725 million, it's going to be paid for. Nobody's going to borrow any money to pay for that. Understood. But, but in the future, if we have a deficit this year, and now we're, we're looking out now over the next three years, and we're looking to our experts, and they gave us a revised forecast, which said it's worse than they thought it was going to be at budget time. At budget time, we thought we were going to have a, a deficit this year. We thought we were going to have a deficit next year. And then we thought that it was going to come back. We are going to come back to surplus without us having to do a thing. But now the forecast has changed. Things change in the world. And now the, the, the new information we're getting is telling us that if we don't make moves to reduce spending, we're going to have deficits for, for the next three years in a row. That's what Minister Kennedy is doing. And that's where conservatism has to rule today here. And that acknowledgement was due years ago. Whether or not we've done enough of it, I think people can make up their own mind. The public service is one thing that people point to as a way to curb spending. But, of course, we know that cannot answer our deficit position and our expenditure problems. Where outside of the public service and all encompassing the public service can we expect and should we be cutting? And is the hospital in Cornerbrook promised by the government now in jeopardy given where we are? Uh, Pat, again, you know, there's a difference between, you know, your expense, your spend, your, your spending on expenses and capital expenditures. We, we can still do capital expenditures. I mean, most governments... We don't have to, though, sir. That's part of the issue, isn't it? You don't have to, but there's certain things. There's still infrastructure needs in this province, and then we're going we're to deal with them. Patty, remember, you, you can't just think about 12-month slots. You, got, you, you know, you, you, you've obviously got to deal with that because the law requires us to deal with the 12-month period. But we also look at next year. We look at the year after, and we look at the year after that. And, and generally, we have made investments that are going to pay off, uh, Muskrat Falls being one, the oil and gas uh, being others. And uh, revenues are going to be strong. There's also going to be additional oil, oil fines and mineral fines. I'm, I'm, I'm quite optimistic about that. But we have to live within our means, and for the most part, we have done that. Now things have changed. We have to adjust, and it's a, it's a, it's as simple. It's certainly not as some people say. Oh, you didn't predict the price of oil. Well, if we had predicted the price of oil, so what would have been the difference? We still would have been able to pay for the deficit. We don't have to go to the bank to get money to pay for that, but we have to change our spending. That's what we have to do, and, and that that's was, what we're going to do. And that was the writing and the warnings that were on the wall. Minister Marshall, brought to the 3 o'clock news. I appreciate your time and look forward to talking Thanks. again soon. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to, to have a say on this issue. Pleasure. All the best. Bye-bye. Tom Marshall, member Humber East, and also the Minister of Natural Resources, Forestry, Ag Foods, and the like, the Attorney General as well.